Go to Matthew chapter 28, 16 and 17. Matthew 28, 16 and 17. To this topic, if you haven't shared, if you have your phone, you can share. I truly believe you have a friend or your family member that need to hear this message. 
that need to hear this message. And the topic is removing the power of doubt. Removing the power of doubt. On Sunday, I gave you four enemies of the promises of God. I mean, remember that. There are four enemies of the promises of God. The first one is reason. Second is unbelief. Third is doubt. And we remember that. Discouragement. Discouragement. Those four are the enemy of the promises of God. If you can remove the four, you will experience the manifestation of God's promises in your life. Matthew 28, 16 and 17. Then the disciple did 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some some doubted. In the world that we are in today, we are constantly led to doubt everything. That's the world that we are in today. There is hardly any trust and faith is treated. It's like it's the things of the past. Can you help me adjust the mic? It's going in and out, please. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Is it good now? Oh, okay. All right. Let's talk now about what is doubt. Doubt is not to believe. It is the absence of faith. And an evil spirit. Doubt, or also reason, unbelief, is not to believe. It is the absence of faith and evil spirit. That's how we're going to deal with it today. Let's go to Matthew 21, 21. So Jesus answered and said to them, I surely I said to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done for you. It will be done for you. Now, I want to talk to you about how the enemy attack us with doubt. The enemy always used doubt as a weapon against our faith in God. Especially life situations, the enemy, one of the area is when we are waiting for a long time for something to happen. Come on, how many have been waiting for something to happen? How many have been trusting God for some kind of blessing, some kind of miracles, some kind of breakthrough? So the enemy, this is the time we need to watch it. This is the time the enemy will use doubt as a word, as an attack. He used doubt as an attack to us. When? When we have to wait a long time for something to happen. Doubt attacks when things did not happen when we expected them to happen. 
especially if we are praying. Because most people say, well, but I'm praying. Or I've been praying. I'm fasting right through, but nothing is happening. Watch it. That's the time that doubt will come. It attacks our faith. If we've been waiting for so long, and especially if you've been praying for what you are waiting on, a lot of people get discouraged. But what I need to tell you today, God never late. God is never late. He is an on-time God. God's time is perfect. Glory to God. But watch it anytime waiting for something for your life, for your family, for your business, for your job, and you are praying about them, that is the time that the enemy is going to attack you. And he's going to use the word doubt, reason, and unbelief to try to discourage you. Another area that the enemy used always attack us is when facts say one thing and faith say another thing. Please, if you are making note, write it down. I made up my mind today, I'm going to teach, I'm going to take my time. Is that right? Well, if it's not all right, I already made up my mind. Anyway, remember number one, anytime we are waiting for so long, especially we are praying. Come on, I may not be praying for something they're trusting God for so long. Watch it. That is the time doubt is going to come. And doubt is going to come as an attack. Especially if you are praying about those things and it didn't happen. Because sometimes we expect to pray and for things to happen right away. Come on, somebody. We want to pray and we want it to happen right away. Well, some things will happen that way, but not everything. Some, some things we have to wait. So most people get discouraged. Do you know why they get discouraged? They've been waiting so long, but the enemy is attacking their faith and the enemy is using doubt. The second one is when facts say one thing and faith says something else. Can I give you an example? Facts. Let's use the example of this chair. Facts say that this chair is sick. This chair has cancer. And the doctors have already confirmed it. They have proved that this chair has cancer. It's very, very sick, right? That's fact. It has been proven. But faith says, by its stripes, we are healed. Anytime you have facts and faith, one is pulling up to one side, the other is pulling up to another side. That is the time you doubt will come in to support facts, not faith. Are you sharing me? So because in this world that we are in, we are constantly pulled into two different directions. And the direction of faith and facts. Facts are subject to change when confronted with faith. Facts? Facts? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is better. It's better. Thank you, Jesus. Can we bless God for that? <laughs> oh, the battery is about to die. They will switch it and bring it back. Amen. So when faith said one thing and faith says something else. In this world, we are constantly pulled in two different directions. Faith and facts. But facts are subject to change when confronted with faith. Facts cannot have the last word. 
faith always have the last word. Facts are subject to change. Facts are not permanent. But faith always have the last word. Faith, truth never change. But fact, we always change. Anytime we have that situation like that, that faith say one thing and fact said another thing, guess what happened? We will begin to receive attack of doubt. Please, church, watch it. Of doubt that is going to happen. Doubt never support faith. Doubt always support facts. But we know that fact will change. If you can confront fact with faith. Can I hear amen with that? The third one I want to share with you when the enemy normally attack us with doubt. When things does not go the way we expect. When things does not go the way we expect. If it doesn't go according to our plan, we must ask ourselves, why is that? Instead of being discouraged. God's plan is always the best. The word of God said that God's plans and desire are better and more profitable for our life. When things are not going the way they're supposed to go, the enemy attack us with doubt. And we begin to do what? To doubt. Also, let's talk again about another one I want to share with you. The effects of doubt. The effect. What are the effects of doubt? Number one, doubt is a faith killer. Doubt is there to kill your faith. Let's go to Hebrews 11.6. The effect of doubt. Doubt is a faith killer. Doubt kills your faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Must believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if we don't have faith and we have doubt, we cannot receive from God. The only way we can receive from God is when we please God. How do we please God? We please God with our faith. If we don't please God, guess what we do? We displease God. And if we displease God, we cannot receive from God. That's what the Bible says. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So the first thing you must know that God he is. And then he is the rewarder that diligently seek him. We either have doubt or we have faith. We can have both. You can have a little faith and a little doubt. It's either you have faith or you have what? Doubt. Both cannot coexist. It's going to be one. When doubt comes, it kills your faith. When faith comes, it kills doubt. And the only way we can receive from God is when we have faith in God. Doubt cannot please God. Can I hear amen on that one? Amen. Doubt cannot please God. Faith can please God. Glory to God. And we must believe that he is. And he is the rewarder of those that were that diligently seeking. So the effect of doubt is doubt is a killer of faith. 
He is a killer of faith. Number two, doubt produces double-minded people. Doubt, doubt is dangerous. That's one of the reasons a lot of people cannot receive from God. A lot of believers are struggling to receive from God because they always doubt. They allow reason, unbelief, and doubt to come in. When that comes in, it discourages you. But if you don't allow it, we have to remove it. Amen? Today, we're going to remove it today. We are going to be praying today. I have some prayer points that we're going to pray to remove doubt. The moment you receive, remove doubt, you will begin to receive from God. Amen. Remember last week or Sunday, I also tell you about faith, what we need to receive from God. Faith, number two, hope. Number three, trust. The first one is what? Faith. Amen. Faith is believing the unreasonable. Faith, hope. Hope is optimistic expectation. And then, trust. We have to keep on trusting God until we see the manifestations of what we are trusting God for. Can I hear amen to that? Also, doubt produces double-minded people. Let's go to James 1, 6, and 8. James 1. I will be giving you scriptures. Amen? James 1, 6 and 8. 6 to 8, brother. Double-minded people. He said, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubt is like a wave of the sea. Driven and tossed by wind, by the wind. But let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Look at that. He cannot receive anything from the Lord. If doubt keep on coming in when the prophetic word is given to you. I'm not telling you when man tells you things. I'm telling you when God speaks to you. When God says he wants to make you great, just believe it. Don't reason and try to find out how God is going to do it. That is not your assignment. Your assignment is to believe the promises of God. Promises of God are yea and amen. If God said it, all you have to do is to believe it and keep on believing and keep on trusting God and it's going to come to pass. Can I hear amen to that? Come on, can I hear amen to that? If God said it, just believe it. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to reason. Just believe. Amen. Do you believe that God is going to bless you this year? Do you believe that God is going to anoint you this year? Do you believe God will do great things in your life this year? Don't reason. He's going to do it. Hallelujah. He has begun it. And he has started. He's going to finish it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't need to reason. You don't need to doubt it. God said it. And God is able to do it. He has the power to do it. He has the grace to do it. Hallelujah. Our God is loaded. He got everything. Oh, God. I, I want to teach. I don't want to preach today. Oh, God. He's able to do it. And he's going to do it. God said, you'll be great in this land. You're going to be great in this land. All you have to do is to believe. I say, all you have to do is to believe. I say, all you have to do is to believe. Don't doubt God. My God is able. My God is more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you think or all you ask. He's going to do it. Thou shalt not doubt. You must remove that spirit of doubt. It will block you from receiving from God. Look at the Bible said. Let that man let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Nothing from the Lord. A lot of believers have missed the promises of God because of doubt. 
Pastor Martin, a lot of believers, they doubt God. You know why? Because a lot of us, we don't truly, truly know God. You don't know the God that we serve. We doubt. If you doubt, you cannot receive His promise. We declare this year a year of manifestation. Hello, if you have doubt, it will not happen. We have to remove doubt. We have to remove unbelief. We have to remove reason. If I tell you something, reason. For if God said it, if I tell you that God said it, you better believe it. Doubt is a killer. Faith killer. It kills believers' faith. That's why a lot of people, a lot of believers, cannot receive from God because they doubt God. Let's go back to James. Can we read together? Oh boy! James one again, six and eight. He said, but let him ask in what? He didn't say in doubt. But the he that comes to him know that he is. So when you come to God, you don't come with doubt. You come with faith. You know he's able. Amen. He said, but let him ask in. Come on, let him ask in. With no For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything, anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his way. Doubt Causes us to go back and forth between believing or not constantly. This makes us double minded. If you are thinking, maybe you will do it, maybe you will not do it, that means you are what? Double minded. We have to believe God said it, He's able to do it. Amen. Come on, can we say amen? Come on, can we share out? Amen. Come say God is going to do it. God is going to perfect it. This year is my year of manifestations. This year, the promises of God ordained for this year will manifest. I will not doubt. I will believe in the name of Jesus. I will move in faith. I believe God said it. I believe it. And that settled it. I will not waver. I will not be tossed to and fro. I believe the word of the Lord. I believe prophetic word of God. Come on, someone's giving praise and glory. But when we are tossed to and fro, this makes us double-minded and unstable. Guess what happened? It disqualifies us from receiving from God. It disqualifies us. From receiving from God. The third one. Doubt will not allow you to receive what God has for you. Doubt. Let's go to Matthew 14, 31. You see, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand. And caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you? Why did you? Come on, say that again. Why did you? Why did you? Did you see that? Well, this is Peter. Peter was walking on the water. Amen. He believes. He told Jesus, If it is you, Command me to come. Remember the story, right? He said, if it is you, because they were not sure it was Jesus. 
Jesus was walking on the wall, on the water. Actually, when we went to Israel, Pastor Mansha and I, we went to Jordan, where Jesus actually walked on the water, and a rabbi was there that told us how far Jesus was walking from. When you are in Jordan, you see a big mountain on the other side. It's very far. So, the rabbi was telling us, actually, Jesus went there to pray. Jesus just finished praying. Honest. The rabbi, you know, said that mountain, Jesus was walking all the way from that mountain, coming so far. When you go to Jerusalem, go to Jordan and see what I'm talking about. He said Jesus was actually, after prayer, he was actually walking on the water. That's why the disciple didn't know who he was. The disciple thought he was a ghost. Because he was far away. They cannot recognize him. So as he moved closer to them, Peter wasn't even sure it was him. At first, they thought it was a what? Ghost. And Peter said, ah, is it ghost? Because man does not walk on the water. Remember, Peter was a professional fisherman. He knows that man does not walk on the water. I'm not a professional fisherman, but I know that man cannot walk on the water. So when he realized, say, it looked like Jesus. Then he said, to be sure, he said, Lord, if it is you, do what? Command me. I, I, I like that version that uses the word command. He said, command me to come. In other words, command me to do impossible. Command me to do what I'm not supposed to do. And Jesus said, what? Come on, Jesus said, what? Years back, I, I studied this in Greek. And I look up the word, come. What does that mean? The, the root word of come. And the Greek word is el kame. It means to command something from over there to come over here. It also means to command something that not supposed to be to be. That's what Peter used that word. Come. Command me to do what I'm not supposed to do. Command me to come. Let it be. But the thing is, this is the point. Peter began to walk on the water in the beginning. Is that right? He was walking on the water. Why? In the beginning, he did not doubt. In the beginning, he believed the word of the Lord. In the beginning, he was actually walking on the water. And the moment he doubted, what happened? He began to, he began to sink. And that's what Jesus told us. Following and obey Jesus will always require faith. In the kingdom of God, all that we do require what? Faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. When doubt attack, what we do, we have to cast it out from our life. We have to cast it out and walk by faith. Amen? Now, we're going to get to the interesting point now. How can we be free from doubt? This is the assignment we're going to do today. We are going to pray today. But before we do, I'm going to give you this point. How can we be free from doubt? If I don't share this, my assignment is not over. This year, you don't want to doubt. As a Christian, you don't want to doubt. If not, all the promises of God will not come to pass. Only way we can receive the promises of God is by moving in faith. Can I hear amen, church? Can I hear amen, church? Praise the Lord. So how can we be free from doubt? Number one, take responsibility for doubting God. Please, take that responsibility for what? For doubting God. Admit the way 
the way is that you doubt God in your life. Admit it. Take responsibility. Amen? Very important. Say, yes, Lord, I have doubted you in my life. All your prophetic word did not make sense to me. I doubted you. You must take responsibility of what? Of doubting God. If you don't take responsibility, you will not repent of it. So number one, we're going to take responsibility. How many have doubted God before? Come on, let me see your hand. Ah, yeah. How many have doubted God? We are all, we've doubted God. There's some prophetic word that did not make sense to us. It don't make sense. Because you know what? We were looking at our circumstances now. We are looking at our strength and our power. What we have to realize is that God is the one that will do it. Amen. As long as we obey him and do what we're supposed to do. So we have to take responsibility for doubting God. Amen. So the first thing we do is to admit. Say, Lord, I have doubted you in my life. You promised me that you would do this in my life. I did not believe. You have to admit. Glory to God. We want to remove that spirit. I call it a spirit. It is a spirit of doubt. Amen. It is a spirit of doubt. And we're going to deal with it as a spirit today in the name of Jesus Christ. What do you do with the spirit? Cast it out from your life. Is the enemy of God promises in your life? Is doubt have been blocking you from receiving from God? So, number one, we have to take responsibility. We want manifestation this year. I'm only trusting God for something big. I'm trusting God for something huge. Amen. I can't allow that doubt to kill my faith. Doubt is faith killer. Are you hear what I'm saying? I want to provoke you today. That doubt, anytime that comes, you know you want to kill your faith. Don't allow your faith to be killed by doubt. Because if it's dead, you cannot receive anything from God. Doubt is a killer. I hate it. It's a spirit of doubt. It's a demon. Listen to me. You say what? Demon. I know some folks, they always doubt it. Everything they doubt. I don't do it. I don't think so. I'm going to right now. No, you are looking into your own strength and your own ability. God is going to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit to you. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says we can do exceedingly and what? Abundantly. Above what? According to that was in us. The power is in you. God is going to do it in you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how the Holy Spirit collaborates with us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will collaborate with us. I'm telling you, he's going to do it through you in the name of Jesus Christ. But what you got to do, cast out. Cast it out. Hello? So how can we do this? Number one, Take responsibility of doubting. We have to admit that we have doubted God. Are you hear what I'm saying? I remember years ago, I have a little story, but I'm trying not to do that. We have to pray today. That's why I'm moving swiftly. So let me just tell you this quick. Years ago, right before the ministry, the Lord told us to go to a prophetic conference. Um... Apostle Charlotte. Not knowing that it was a divine appointment. The prophet was there. Praying all night that we will come. For what God is about to do. At the beginning of ministry. Then after that. He came to me. He gave me some prophetic word. And I doubted him. I doubted the prophetic word. And those prophetic words. It's now happened. It's been a long time. I told my wife, who's a man, don't forgive me, I doubted this prophetic word. 
And this is happening as I speak to you. So what we have to do? Take responsibility. Repent. Number two. Repent for doubting. Be honest with God and ask him to forgive you for doubting him. We have all doubted God. Number one, admit. Number two, repent of doubting God. I repent of that. As Pastor Manchester said, man, I repent. This man told me, yes, man, what is going to be happening? Yes, man. See, I see nation calling you to come. Pastor, I just turned down Malaysia. Turned down Dubai right now. They said, come. Nations to do crusade all over the world. They call him. I was, I will tell you, I doubted that I can live. I don't think so. Maybe this prophet missed it. If he missed it, it was God. Repent for doubting God. Number three, cast out the spirit of doubt. Cast it out from your life. Listen to me. Doubt is the manifestation of demon spirit. I know you haven't seen like that before. You haven't heard it like that before. But I'm telling you, doubt is the manifestation of what? Demon spirit. It's the manifestation of demon spirit. So it's a spirit. We have to cast it out. We have to rebuke it. We have to cast it out. The spirit of doubt. The spirit of unbelief. And replace them with faith. Oh, we're going to do that tonight, church. You don't cast out and don't replace. Cast out, you don't replace, there's a void. You don't want that void to be there. So we got to cast out spirit of reason, spirit of unbelief, spirit of doubt, spirit of discouragement, and we're going to replace it with what? Faith, hope, trust. Oh, come on. Come say it again. We replace it with what? Faith, hope, and trust. We will cast out what? Spirit. Call it spirit. It's a spirit. Spirit of doubt. It's a spirit. It's a manifestation of demon. It's fighting faith. It's a faith killer. You want to kill your faith. It's demon. Amen. Don't take it lightly. It's a demon that wants to kill your faith. Whatever I want to kill what God has given to you is a manifestation of demon. Do you know that faith is giving to every believer a measure of faith when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Then you are responsible to develop it. Hello, church. You are responsible to develop your what? Your faith. How do you develop faith? Come on, talk to me, church. How do you develop? It's a seed. Do you know the faith that we have when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is given by God? God gave the liver faith. I'll show you in the scripture. I preached that last year. Faith. He gives you faith. And that's what we call what? Measure of faith. There's also a gift of faith. I'm not talking about the gift of faith. I'm talking about the measure of faith. You are responsible to develop that. And anything that wants to kill it is a demon. Anything that wants to kill it is a spirit. Oh my God. You know, believers don't know, so they take it easy. Doubt. No, it's a demon. Cast that thing out of your life. That's how I deal with it. Hello? That's how I deal with it. I cast it out. I rebuke it. God said it. I believe it. 
to you, spirit of doubt, I command you, go for my life in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit of reason, go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anytime you begin to say, well, I don't know if God's going to do it, you are doubting. That means that spirit has kicked in. You got to cast it. So cast out the spirit of doubt. Doubt is a manifestation of a demon spirit. Cast out the spirit of doubt, spirit of unbelief, and replace it with faith, hope, and, and trust. That's number three. Number four. Then we begin to pray. Number four. Walk in the measure of faith God gave you. Walk in the measure of faith God gave you. God has given you a measure of faith. It is time to believe God and walk in the faith that God has given to you. The first thing we do, will we cast it out in Jesus' name? Amen, church? Now, let us stand on our feet. We're going to pray. The first prayer we want to pray. Is the prayer of salvation. Then the next one we're going to pray. We're going to repent and renounce. Because if it is a spirit. It's a manifestation of demon spirit. How we deal with it. We repent and we renounce. And we revoke and cast it out. Can we say amen? amen. Say Heavenly Father. I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God and he has died for my sin. Lord Jesus, I declare you today as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, give me your spirit and your power. Lord Jesus, I thank you and I bless your holy name. Come into my life. Restore my soul. And lead me in the path of righteousness. For your name's sake. In your name I pray. Amen. Anyone praying this prayer for the first time? I don't see anybody. Anybody prayed this before? Very good. So now let's go. I'm going to lead you to repent. Go and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I stand on the rock. And Jesus is that rock. I repent today for doubting you in the name of Jesus. I repent today in every areas that have doubted you. I ask you to forgive me in the name of Jesus. And I renounce the spirit of reason. I renounce spirit of unbelief. I renounce Spirit of doubt, I renounce. Spirit of discouragement, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say the God, I stand on the rock, and Jesus is that rock. I confess today that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And it is Him that I will serve for the rest of my life. So Lord Jesus, I thank you. For the finished work of the cross. So I repent for doubting you, Lord. I repent. I repent for doubting you. I renounce spirit of reason. I renounce unbelief. I renounce spirit of doubt. I renounce spirit of discouragement. I renounce them now. I redeem them now. And I revoke them in the name of Jesus. I renounce them in the mighty name of Jesus. I renounce them in the name of Jesus Christ. From today on, Lord, when you speak to me, I will believe. I will not allow doubt to come into my life. 
Because now I know that thou is a manifestation of demon spirit in the name of Jesus. So today, in the, in the authority of Jesus Christ, in my authority in Jesus Christ, personalize it. In my authority in Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I cast out spirit of doubt. I cast out spirit of reason. I cast out spirit of unbelief. I cast out spirit of discouragement in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In my authority, Christ Jesus. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, I cast out. I cast out spirit of reason. I cast out spirit of unbelief. I cast out spirit of doubt. I cast out spirit of discouragement in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, begin to cast it down your own way. Begin to pray. Come on, try. Begin to pray. It's hindering you from receiving from God. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Come on, righteous anger. Begin to pray. Spirit of doubt, cast it out. In the name of Jesus, I cast out spirit of doubt from my life. I cast out spirit of reason from my life. I cast out spirit of unbelief from my life. I cast out spirit of discouragement from my life. In the name of Jesus, cast it out. Cast it out. It's hindering you from receiving from God. It's hindering you from receiving the blessings of God. Somebody cast it out. Somebody cast it out. Somebody cast it out. God wants to bless you this year. Oh God of heaven. Class it out. Class it out. Spirit of reason. Spirit of reason. Class it out. Spirit of unbelief. Cast it out. Believe in, unbelief in the word of God. Cast it out. Cast it out. Cast it out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come and pray. 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 This is your year of manifestations. God wants to bless you this year. So in the name of Jesus, spirit of reason, spirit of unbelief, spirit of doubt, cast it out, 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 cast it out. It's a demon. It's a demon. Cast it out. Don't want you. Don't want you to receive from the Lord. Cast it out. Rapa passe ye, rapa passe ye, rata kapoko bata, rete ke poko. Cast it out, spirit of doubt, spirit of reason. You are going to make it. You will receive from God, but doubt must go. Doubt must go. Doubt must go. God wants to bless you. God wants to favor you. Rapa passe ye. Even on the Facebook, begin to pray. Cast it out, spirit of doubt. Cast it out. Spirit of reason. Cast it out. In the name of Jesus. Cast it out. Cast it out. Cast it out. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of discouragement. Discouragement. is a demon. Cast it out. Rababa soko basa. Ma 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 soko basa. Ma 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 soko basa. Ma 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 soko basa. Re pe pe ke te. Ma 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 soko. Re se ke te. Cast it out from your life. Pray. Cast it out. Doubt must go. Spirit of doubt. Spirit of doubt must go. Spirit of reason must go. God wants to do a new thing. Cast it out. Spirit of unbelief. Unbelief. Unbelief the promise of God. Unbelief the word of God. It's a demon. Cast it out. Oh, somebody pray. ready? Come on. Yes. Yes. Yes, Ezekiel. Yes. Yes, Tyler. Yes, Kim. Yes. 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 Pray. Pray. It's a demon. It's a demon. Cast it out. Cast it out. Oh, you will walk in the measure of faith. 
God has given to you. Doubt that you're not going to make it. Doubt that you won't get a good job. Doubt that you won't fill in college. Doubt that you won't receive the blessing of God. Yes, this is better. Command you to go in the authority of Christ Jesus. Your authority in Christ Jesus with the power of the Holy Ghost. You command it to go. Command it to go. Cast it out. 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 Rapo kapa. Rapo kapa. Rapo kapa. This is your year of manifestations. This is the year that God wants to elevate you. Don't allow doubt to kill your faith. Doubt is a killer. Doubt is a faith killer. Doubt is a faith killer. Command it to go now. In the name of Jesus. Doubt is faith killer. It will not kill your faith. It will not kill your faith. Command it to go. Oh, this is warfare. Warfare. Because we are dealing with demons. We are dealing with demons. It's a manifestation of demons. Not to believe God's promises. Doubt must go. Doubt must go. Unbelief must go. Reason must go. Their spirit. Rapa. Oh, come on, pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Yes. Spirit of reason. Spirit of unbelief. Spirit of doubt. Spirit of discouragement. Must go. Prayer, 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 prayer. Doubt is a manifestation of demons. They have to go. They have to go. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. And give God glory. And give God glory. And give God praise. Glory to God. I see those spirits are, are living and living and living. They have to go. They cannot stay in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Then the next one, we are now going to declare some things over our lives. Anytime you cast out, you have to replace. Because it's a void. We have to replace it. So when they try to come, up, come back, there's no room in the hymn. The hymn is full. Amen? So we're going to declare faith hope and trust over our life. Faith is believing the unreasonable. Hope is optimistic expectation. Trust is keep on trusting God until it happens. Until. Trust is so powerful as well. It, trust does not give up. Trust, always trust him until they see manifestation. Trust will always continue to pray until something happens. Or trust will continue to fast until something happens. Faith too is powerful. Believing, no reason. Believing the promises of God. Believing what God has promised over your life. Amen. That you will begin to walk in them this year. I'm telling you, if you follow my teaching, this teaching, manifestation upon manifestation, things will begin to happen for you. A very simple message, not too deep, not to understand. Amen. Doubt has to go. Unbelief has to go. 
James turned off the book of James. You cannot receive anything from God. You will die. You will receive in Jesus' name. Because you will not doubt. Amen. So now, the next prayer point. We're going to pray. We're going to declare faith over your life. You're going to declare hope. You're going to declare trust. Can we pray? Come on, church. Begin to pray. Declare it over your life. Over your life. In Jesus' name. Yeah, that kind of weak. Let me, let me help you. That kind of weak. Amen? That kind of weak. That's pray for me. Say, Remember. Remember. The demon. The demon. Aggressively. That's why we do deliverance. For the demons to be looking. So when you do that, it's like you don't know your authority in Christ Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me help you. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you. Lord Jesus. I bless your holy name. The Bible says, we shall declare a thing. We shall declare a thing. And it shall be established. Pray now. Are we tired? We don't pray like this. Amen. Tired from work today? When you do deliverance, they will tell you. I use my base with power, with faith. Can we do it again? Amen. Father, we thank you. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. The Bible says, we shall declare a thing and it shall be established. So I stand upon the word of God and I begin to declare right now. I declare measure of faith over my life. I declare hope over my life. I declare trust in God over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, increase my faith. Heavenly Father, Empower my faith. Heavenly Father, increase my faith in the mighty name of Jesus so that doubt will not be able to kill my faith in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare today that everything that I do, I will do it by faith. I will walk by faith and not by sight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I will continue to hope I release the hope upon my life. Hope upon my life. Spirit of expectations. I declare it over my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I also declare over my life. Trust. Trust. I will continue to trust God. For what he has promised. I will not give up. I will not lose hope. In the name of Jesus. I will continue to trust him. Until manifestation. Until manifestation. If I don't see manifestations, I will not stop. If I don't receive breakthrough, I will not stop. In the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter my circumstances. It doesn't matter my situation. I will continue to trust God. I will continue to trust God. I release it from my life. Faith, I release it. Faith, I declare. Hope, I declare. In the name of Jesus. Trust in God, I declare. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will have. I will have. I will have. I will have. Attitude of faith. I will have. Attitude of hope. I will have. 
attitude of trusting. I will keep on trusting God. I'm not going to give up in the name of Jesus. I will have an attitude just like Jacob. Lord, like Jacob. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. If I don't receive, I will not stop. I will not stop. I declare it over my life. I declare it over my life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I will continue to start in faith. I will continue to expect. I will continue to trust God. I will not stop. I will not stop. In the name of Jesus. Doubt, doubt, doubt. I prophesy. You will not kill my faith. In the name of Jesus. You spirit of doubt. You spirit of doubt, you will not kill my faith. You spirit of doubt, you will not kill my hope. You spirit of doubt, you will not come and trust in God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, faith has replaced doubt. Faith has replaced doubt. Hope has replaced unbelief. And reasoning, trusting, trusting, I've replaced, I've replaced spirit of discouragement. There's no room for you in my life. I will have faith in God. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. I want to please God every day of my life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe every promises of God. Every promises of God. I will wait for them. I will be expectant in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout. Somebody shout. 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 Shout! 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 Praise God! Shout! Shout! Doubt is going! Doubt is going! In the name of Jesus! Doubt is going! Spirit of doubt is going! I declare with my mouth Oh, don't get tired. I declare with my mouth, I will start speaking faith. I will start speaking and moving my faith. I will start speaking. I will start speaking. I will start speaking. Oh God, maybe I can bring that Sunday. The Bible says, if you say to the mountain, if you say to who? The mountain will walk. Saying and confessing feeds our faith. Not only say it and stand still. Speak it and move. Speak it and act. Oh God. Doing is the reading of faith. Not talking. But it's good to talk to. It feeds your faith. Some people talk, but they don't do. Say, Lord, I thank you. All your promises are there and amen. I believe them. I believe them all. I am expectant, and I will wait. I will wait. Until manifestation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. While I'm waiting. I'm praying. While I'm waiting. I'm praising. When I'm waiting. I'm worshiping you. While I'm waiting. I'm dancing to the glory of the Lord. Yes. 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 This is my year. Of manifestation. Doubt, doubt, your assignment is over. Faith begin to increase. Hope in God 
begin to increase in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 I declare over your life uh, there shall be manifestation uh, for you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I say there shall be manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will get better job in the name of Jesus Christ. You will start good businesses in the name of Jesus Christ. You will get a new house, better house, bigger house in the name of Jesus Christ. You will trade in your whole vehicle for new because the Lord is doing a new thing. If you believe, shall ye? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is my year. This is my year. This is my year of manifestations. In the name of Jesus, I believe the word of the Lord. Ah, Father, I believe your word. From today on, I will begin to move by faith. I will speak. I will speak faith. I will move by faith. I will speak. I will speak. I will speak. I will say to the mountain. I will say to the mountain. Be removed. And I will begin to move toward the mountain. But God know that my God is bigger than the mountain. I say to the mountain. Oh God, I say to the mountain. Be that removed. I will say... And I will move. I will say, and I will move. Because faith is corresponding action. Corresponding action. Corresponding action. I'm moving towards the mountain. And I'm saying to the mountain, be that removed. I don't need to move the mountain. But my God, the Bible says, they that know their God. Oh, I feel I feel it. Oh, they that know their God, they shall be strong and do mighty as boy. Say this year, this year, this year, I will do mighty things. Do this year, I will do great things with my measure of faith. With my measure of faith. From today on, the way I speak has changed. I'll begin to speak faith. Oh God, even though I don't see it, but I'm speaking it. Even though I can't hear it, but I'm speaking it. Because I know, I know, I know my God. My God is bigger than the mountain. Down the mountain. I declare, I declare, this is my year of more than enough. This is my year of the overflow. The year of not enough is over. The year of just enough is over. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. It is a new beginning. The Lord is doing a new thing. So I'm moving over to my promised land. I'm moving to my promised land. Out, your assignment is over. Reason, your assignment is over. Spirit of unbelief, your assignment is over. You are being replaced. You are being replaced. You are being replaced. Oh, I hear eviction for spirit of doubt. Spirit of doubt is evicted. Spirit of reason is evicted. Spirit of unbelief, they are evicted. The Holy Ghost are carrying their luggages and their baggages. They are evicted. My sheriff is Holy Ghost. I have a sheriff and his name is Holy Ghost. He has moved them away. Said faith, come in. Faith, come in. Hope, come in. Hope, come in. Hope, faith, trust in. Come in and dwell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
we have a new tenant. We have a new tenant, and his name is faith. We have a new tenant, and his name is hope. We have a new tenant, and his name is trust. Oh God, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Spirit of thou, evicted. Evicted. Spirit of thou, evicted. Get out. Get out. Get out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I thank you. You are my sheriff. Get him out. Cast him out. Cast them out. Cast them out. Spirit of reason, out. Spirit of doubt, out. Spirit of unbelief, out. Faith, moving. Yay! Oh, moving. Yay! Hey, trust him, moving. I prophesy over your life. You shall receive double portion. You shall receive and ten, one thousand portion in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life that things will begin to happen for you. Miracle will begin to happen in your house. He has to start in your house, not at your workplace, not at your job. In your house, in your house. Then when you go out, because you carry what you carry is contagious. It's contagious. You're gonna spread it. You're gonna spread faith, faith, hope, trusting, coming and stay and dwell. Father, I thank you. Father, thank you. I thank you. I'm speaking faith. I'm one of conqueror. I'm making it. I'm marching forward. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Nothing can stop me. I am unshakable. Nothing can stop me. I am moving. I am moving. I am moving. Every obstacle got to go. Every indolence got to go. Because now I have a mountain moving faith. Mountain moving faith. If I were you, begin to speak to your mountain. Whatever is your mountain, speak to your mountain. I say to you, and command your mountain to go. Say to your mountain. Say to your mountain. Say to your mountain. Every mountain must go in the mighty name of Jesus. For the sons and daughters of God are here. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greater, greater is he that inside of me, that inside of me, because of my relationship with him. When I say it, it will move it. When I cast it out, it will cast it out. In the name of Jesus. Say, Father, I thank you for the measure of faith. I thank you for a new level of faith. I thank you for manifestations that I will begin to receive. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout. Hey, yeah, 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 it is so. It is so. Manifestation upon manifestation. I say grace. I say grace upon grace. From today on, I will begin to receive grace upon grace as I move by faith. As I move in expectation, as I continue to trust God, there shall be grace upon grace, favor upon favor, anointing upon anointing, grace upon grace, blessing upon blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And that's settled there. I'm unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I'm moving forward. I believe every promise of God over my life. In the name of Jesus. If you are trusting God for healing, it is done. Come on, somebody give him praise. I gotta go. 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 Father, I gotta go. Father, I gotta go. Father, we thank you. So today I declare faith, hope, 
and trust over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As you have declared with your mouth, so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. And Jesus says, say to the mountain, say to your mountain, and the God that you trust will move the mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody give God praise. 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 Oh, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you. Just, just remember, doubt is faith killer. Doubt produces double-minded people. Don't do that. What doubt, reason, and unbelief try to do is to replace your faith, your hope, and your trust. And what we've done today, we've replaced them. That's what we try to do, to replace it. And to kill your faith. Continue to trust God. God's timing is the best. There's a song, it might not come when you want it, but it's always on time. On time God. Our God is an on time God. It might not come when you want it. His time is the best. Amen? Hallelujah. Continue to trust God. Amen. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's give him praise for all his promises. All his promises. Amen. All his promises. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. You got something for me? Oh. Believe faith, faith, hope, trust him, and stay forever in Jesus' name, amen. Right now, we're going to take our tithe and offering. I want to release a special blessing on your tithe and offering. Let's
Let me tell you the plans of the enemy. I want to tell you. And I want you to bring your tithe and offering. Also, those on Facebook, we have a lot of people on Facebook. I checked the other day on Friday. We have close to 500 people that give. So those on Facebook as well, and people that are here in the sanctuary, listen to this. The enemy may try to steal from you. How do you counter it? You counter it when we honor God with our tithe and offering. Because we know that the devil is a thief anyway. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he might try to steal from you. How you counter it is by honoring God. When you honor God, this is what God will do. Honor God with your tithes and offerings. He releases, this is God now, He releases divine protection. He releases divine grace and favor upon your finances. And I'm going to declare that I'm serious. He tried to steal. That's how we counter it. If you don't counter it, you will steal it. But when you give your tithe, you give your offering, and we use your tithe and your offering for the furtherance of the work of the kingdom of God, what you have done, you have honored God. Honor is what? There's divine exchange. Come on, someone say divine exchange. Come on, someone say divine exchange. Honor is divine exchange. So when you honor God with your tithe, that's your sweat. You work hard for this money. I don't know about you. I work very hard for my money. That's why I don't spend it anyhow. Amen? But I honor God. What I'm doing, I'm investing it in the kingdom of God. It's an investment. Not to play mission. Somebody use the word play mission. It's an investment into the kingdom of God. So when you honor God, this is what God will do. He will release divine protection. To protect your finances. So that the enemy will not be able to steal. That's the first thing he will do. The next thing he will do, he will give you divine grace. There's a scripture that says that the grace to abound. When you give, he gives you divine grace. In everything that you do. Divine grace. And then, favor upon your finances. God told me that one. So I'm going to release... This blessing upon you, so that I give it their tithe and an offering today as you honor God with your tithe. Even those on Facebook that are giving way to give is on the screen. Can we focus the camera on the TVs so they can see where to give? As you honor God today, and as you continue to honor God, Heavenly Father, your name is Jehovah Jireh. Hello, him, Adonai. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ to release your divine protection upon their finances. In the name of Jesus Christ. Also release your special grace upon their finances. So that they may have all sufficient in all things. In all things. In the name of Jesus Christ. As they honor you, you will protect their finances. You will give them divine grace and favor. Uncommon favor, unusual favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That they will continue to increase in favor with God and with man. The Bible makes us understand that Jesus grow or he keep on growing in favor with God and with man. I pray in the name of Jesus that people are releasing their tithe and offering to honor you. Not us, but your kingdom on earth. Father, Release divine protection. Release divine grace. Release divine favor upon their finances, upon their home, upon their children. In the name of Jesus Christ, lack is not your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ, all sufficient in all things is your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God will increase your finances. God will bless you exceedingly and abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says when the thief is caught, he shall return sevenfold. I declare because the devil is caught today. As you honor God, he will release sevenfold, seven sevenfold, seven hundred and seven sevenfold 
7,774. 7 million and 7,774. Everything else, seven. Completion and perfection. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus. The moment you give, God will start that miracle. Divine protection. I can't touch your money. It's a thief. But stop it. Devil. I got this. I'm serious. I'm serious. Don't you open your eyes to see what I'm talking about. The moment you honor God, In Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have it? Just bring your tithe. If you give online, just come make contact with this. You see? That's a little bit. Why is it important to come here and make a point of contact? There's one day I was talking about tithe and offering, and I saw a lot that happened about this few weeks ago, two months ago. I saw it. There's a ladder. Open heaven. As you touch it, you are connected to that open heaven. It's the same thing I'm teaching you. Honor. Divine exchange. And God will bless you exceedingly, abundantly, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Can we stand? Bring your... Oh, just come, just come. There's a divine order today. Divine protection, divine order. Just come, make a contact. Pat, pat today. Promotion, Sean. I know you just got one. Promotion. I believe Pastor Major prophesied that. Promotion. Elevation. Great job. Better job. Businesses. Make contact. Make contact with it. Also, on Facebook, just use your phone. Those that are giving online, use your phone to make contact with your screen. Maybe laptop, iPad. If it's your phone, touch it. You're using it to view. I'm telling you, you will come with testimony. In the name of Jesus. Testimony of divine exchange. As you have sang, Jehovah will turn your life around for the best. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, the Bible says, some trust in chariot and some trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord. The Lord will surprise you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Between now to today, and we cross over to July. Between now today and we cross over to July, God will do a new thing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it. I want you to believe it. I want, don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. Is the Lord speaking? Between today and next week, and as we cross to July, the Lord will do new things in your life. Don't try to figure it out. He's going to do it. Let me tell you what happened to me today or two days ago. The Lord woke me up. 
I was busy all day. When I got home, I said, today I have to sleep. So I take the uh, sleeping tablet, natural one. I told, told my wife, give me sleeping tablet because I must sleep today. No, I was tired. You won't believe what happened. The Lord woke me up at 3 a.m. with sleeping tablet. <laughs> God is my ask her. Eh? What's his name? Melowu. I don't know. I trust her. She gave it to me. I take it. I said, sleeping tablet. She gave it to me. I said, honest. I said, I have to sleep. She gave me two. Even I asked her for three. Ask her. I asked her for three. He said, no, 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 no. Three is too much. You are tired already. I said, I want to be knocked out and sleep. God is my breakthrough. At three, is it this? Three a.m. And I went to bed. What time? About what God is my victory. About one hour. Two hours. I woke up. I had to say no. And because I'm very sensitive. If it's an attack, I will know. This is not an attack. So with my sleeping tablet, God said, eh, eh, you got to get up and pray. I didn't wake up. I didn't wake up. I begin to pray. I begin. God is my victory. You know what I kind of prayer? Just sit down there. Just begin to pray. I begin to pray. I begin to pray. I begin to pray. I don't six, right? She told you, say, uh-uh, you didn't sleep. <laughs> I said, uh-uh. the Lord woke me up at three. But this is the miracle. As I begin to pray from three, around five o'clock, the spirit of the Lord said, check your Dubai phone. You know, I have mega phone, African phone, I have Ghana. I have Zimbabwe, I have Nigerian phone, I have company all over those places. I'm serious. I'm their TV for you to see them. <laughs> Dubai, I have two lines, America two. Just, so I said, check your Dubai phone. Guess what happened? I was there for two hours. God woke me up to intercede for what was going on in Dubai. They know the one that we pray about. Those people, you know. God is my victory. God woke me up. When you wake me up like that, I know something is a fight to happen. Or attack of the enemy. This was not attack. But the way I pray, remember I taught you guys to pray that kind of prayer? Don't pray in understanding you're going to miss it. Because I don't know when he woke me up. I just begin here. I start, Father, I thank you. Rabbi Baba, share the baby. Hey, hey, hey. Holy Spirit nullify it. Holy Spirit neutralize it. It didn't work on my call. It didn't work. I begin to pray. Begin to pray. Then he said, Six. I didn't go to bed till almost day. Even today, I didn't go nowhere. I just stayed home and prayed. The Holy Ghost. God will do new things in your life. God told me to pray for the church. He said, There's something I want to do in your life. And it shall be so in Jesus' name. I got this good news. Then I had to reply to somebody in Atlanta. Pray for me. God was telling me, Pray for me. When God wakes me up, don't complain. I have to say that prayer. That's all. No. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. There's something God will want you to intercede. There's something. And I'm going to let you go. I'm serious. There's something God will not give you. There's a blessing on different platforms. That's what I was doing. Warfare. Remember? Before Timothy 1.18, Paul was telling Timothy, remember the prophecy that was over your life? For then, wage a good warfare. May the Lord bless you. I got to go. Tonight, I will take Give me a tablet. Just in case God's going to wake me up. Are you blessed today, church? Come on, be expectant. Continue to trust God. Don't give up. Don't give up. 
God is going to do it. If God has said it, He is able to do it. Amen. Let us stand on our feet as we dismiss. It might be long to you. It might be too long to say, well, I've been waiting, I've been waiting. And this is the time you need to be careful. This is the time doubt will come. Remember, I'll give you those three points, right? Yes. In our situation of life, it is too long and we are praying. Doubt comes to our time. Amen? Or when we are faced with facts and faith. Can we say facts? And faith. But when fact is confronted by faith, guess what? Huh? Faith work. If they give you facts that this happened to you, use your faith to believe. Because facts always change. Remember they will say, after the fact. Have you heard that word before? Nothing after the truth. Truth don't change. No, I'm serious, right? Truth cannot change. Truth remains the same. It is what it is. But fact is not what it is. It can change. Especially when you use your faith to confront it. When you use it to confront it, fact begins to change. How do you do that all the time? With my ministry. Our ministry. You see facts? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you really good and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you great favor that you have never experienced before. May the Lord continue to keep you and to protect you. And as you have paid your tithe and give your offering to this ministry, you have Honor your God. Yahweh God, I ask you to release divine protection, divine grace, and divine favor upon their life, upon their finances, upon their family, upon whatever they do in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are here with us. Collaborate with them in everything that they're doing. In any area that they're sleeping, Holy Spirit, wake them up. Holy Spirit, quicken them. Holy Spirit, empower them. Holy Spirit, teach them. Holy Spirit, lead them. Holy Spirit, reveal to them what they need to know. I thank you, Lord God. I bless you, Lord God. I exalt your holy name, O Lord. I give you praise and glory and honor. Thank you for what you will do. Thank you. For helping us to remove doubt, to remove reason, to remove unbelief. And thank you, Lord, for replacing them with faith, measure of faith. Thank you, Lord, for replacing them with hope and with trust. Let those three be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them be manifestations. Let many come to manif- to, to give glory to God for what you have done. Father, thank you. I bless you. I give you praise. I give you glory in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout it loud. Amen. 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 God bless you. Remember, conference is this coming weekend. It's this coming weekend. Let's get the flyers, invite friends and family. On Friday of conference is 7 p.m. Church, no 7.30 is 7 p.m. Please be here at 6.30, 6.40. Be here, please, 7 o'clock. And on Saturday, please listen, Saturday is what time? 5. Saturday is at 5 p.m. Let us be here on time. The reason to do that early is for Sunday. So we can finish on time. And Sunday is at 11. Let's invite our friends and our family. You are going to be blessed. It's going to be powerful. Amen. Amen. We have flyers outside. Take flyer. Give to your friends, your neighbors. Oh, ladies, tomorrow. Oh, that's going to be powerful. That's going to be powerful. That's going to be powerful. Amen. What time is that? Start, start at one. Okay. What time are you guys going to start eating? What time is food? So we can start eating. 
What are we going to start eating? Eh? Don't worry. Holy Ghost will lead us. As many that are led by the Spirit of God and the children of God. Holy Spirit is going to lead us there. Okay. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you with the love of God. See you. Amen.